Welcome, everyone. Welcome oh to the latest edition of the Game and Talk podcast. The best podcast, the highest rated podcast on the Spawncast Network, Direct Xbox. Lick my ass. I am your host, one of the three hosts, RGT85, joined always by the delayed Josie Woe. Josie, how we doing? Good. I hope the internet's <laughs> not too horrible. But we'll see. It was a good four second <laughs> delay right there, uh, everyone listening. Uh... It's fine. And Nate the Hate is with us. Nate, how we doing? I'm cold. I'm tired. But I'm here. Hey, you know what? I just woke up from a nap, so I hear you, buddy. I hear you. I accidentally took... I, I was supposed to take a half of one of my medicines this morning, but I was half asleep taking it, and I took a full, and it's just fucked up my entire day. I've been so tired. Jesus. A anyways, um, we got some some stuff to talk about. Obviously, Nintendo... Um, it's not a whole lot going on with Nintendo right now, but that doesn't mean that there's not stuff happening that's somewhat worth talking about. We're going to start things out, though, with an exclusive, if you will, an exclusive preview of Super Mario Brothers Wonder, because someone on this panel has played Super Mario Brothers Wonder, and he or she is going to talk about it now, because I did not go to GameStop to play it. Nate, have you played it? I have not. I'm waiting for the full release so I get just that entire that entire experience in a single go. I don't want to be able to give myself an appetizer that I have to wait a long period of time for the main course. I want to enjoy it all in a single setting. Yeah. Fair. I went to uh, Target and I played it, and it was pretty cool. It feels pretty similar i would say to a lot of the other mario games it's just like much uh, i don't even know how to describe it. it's just better like it feels really smooth really nice the the power-ups like the badges are fantastic that was probably my favorite part they have a couple of them unlocked like uh for the demo and i got as far as you can possibly get in the demo but you can't like play the full game because there's an area of it that's blocked off but, I mean, it was a good time. It doesn't feel like it's, you know, too crazy different from other 2D Marios, just, like, gameplay-wise, if we're not talking about the badges. But that and then the Wonder Seeds really switched things up. Uh, I did, like, three levels, and they all had Wonder Seeds in it, and it was really cool because it just gets really, really chaotic and crazy for a while. And, I mean, it's really exciting. It's very cool. I, I think you can get a really good sense of how it's going to play from the trailers, though. So if you haven't gotten a chance to play it, it's not like, I don't know, I wouldn't say it's like a must-do thing. But if you're curious, I definitely would. I had a friend who wasn't super interested in it, and then he played it when we went to Target, and now he's, like, definitely buying the game. So it's pretty cool. Uh, it's cool to get your hands on it. And to see that art style on the Switch OLED screen was pretty fun as well. What is yep. the difficult? I'm gonna talk really slow so you can anticipate my question. What is the difficulty right. like as far as your experience was concerned? Yeah. So the difficulty. That was perfect. That worked great. <laughs> it was okay. I'm glad. So the difficulty was. If you have the badges, it's not difficult at all, but we are playing like the full game, just the first world of the full game, right? So world one of Mario traditionally isn't too difficult anyways, so it's not like the hardest thing. And then once you get the badges, you can sail through the game with a couple of them. It really depends on like, I think, how you're going to want to utilize those badges if you're going to want to fly through every single level, because if that's the goal, you can do that. Um, but... It, I died like twice. It's mm. not the easiest thing. You can, if you're a little bit careless, you know, things can happen. But it, it's definitely not like Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze level or anything like that, at least from the first three levels I've played. But again, it's not like that would necessarily be the hardest part of any game. What would you say your impressions and initial thoughts were to the recasting of Mario's voice? Do you like the new voice actor and their presentation and performance? Yeah, so 
Uh, it is noticeable. It's very noticeable. I will say, like the, it, the Mario is very verbal in this game, and you can definitely tell that it's not Charles Martinet. I don't think it's anything. To me, I've never really like freaked out too much because it's just sound bites at the end of the day, um, and it doesn't really change up much of the gameplay, and it's not annoying or anything. So it's noticeable, and if you're someone who really cares about that, I can see how maybe you wouldn't like it, but. For me, it definitely wasn't a deal breaker, especially because of how good the rest of the game was. I think that could kind of parlay into yeah. one of the topics that we were going to talk about was um, the fact that there was this mystery shrouding, oh, who's replacing Charles Martinet? And it was, I, I, I don't know if this is because Nintendo was so quiet on it or or what the case was, but there was definitely like a level of mystery and sort of an aura surrounding it. And then today, uh, at the time of the filming of this episode, which is Friday the 13th, um, we learned because the voice actor, the new voice actor came out and said, hey, hey, Buster, I not only did Mario, but I also did Luigi. And his name is the legendary, the well-known, the well-traveled Kevin Afghani. Afghani, Afghani, I don't know how you say it, because I've never heard of this motherfucker. So, f for me, this was kind of like, <laughs> I didn't care to begin with that Charles Martinet was being replaced, but the way everything felt set up, it, it seemed like there was going to be some, some like, grandiose announcement and then this is what it like. Uh, did the internet just overreact to this, Nate, or was this something that you know there kind of was a groundwork laid for it to be some sort of potentially exciting reveal? And then this is what we got. It's difficult to say because I have seen some give the speculative angle of perhaps Nintendo wanted to protect Kevin from the internet's onslaught of negativity where they would have blamed him for Charles Martinet opting to retire and become an ambassador of Mario. And I could see that point of view of them trying to protect. But at the same time, I feel as though the individuals that would target him and attack him will do it now. Or had they waited until the game had officially launched, the individuals still would have attacked. So maybe that was a factor that they considered. There's also the possibility that given Chris Pratt is the voice of Mario in the movie, and maybe we see Nintendo continue to expand Mario into other entertainment industries. So if he's voiced at the amusement park, would you use Charles Martinet? Are you going to use Kevin? Or would you find another actor to voice him there for interactive you know, demonstrations and such? So maybe Nintendo was trying to downplay the new actor because they don't really view it as that important. Because if they are going to utilize multiple voices across different forms of entertainment, then there's no reason to really make it a singular major focus for themselves. But ultimately, I still think Nintendo should have been very transparent when the decision to no longer use Charles Martinet was made to come out and say, Kevin will be the new voice of Mario and Luigi in Mario Wonder and future projects. And I think generally the community would have been fine with it. By keeping it secret, all we saw was a lot of that mystique and wild speculation where select individuals were very concerned that Chris Pratt was going to be voicing Mario in the game, which clearly is not the case. And Nintendo went the complete opposite direction by going with an unknown up and coming voice actor versus someone who was more established in the acting or voice acting industry. So I think Nintendo's handling of it could have been better. I think this is one of those cases where transparency could have been their friend, but ultimately Nintendo made their decision for whatever reason they believe was for the best. And I mean, hopefully Kevin doesn't get any unnecessary negativity or attacks on social media for replacing Charles Martinet, but it's the internet. We know how it works. It can be incredibly toxic, but ideally he is able to avoid all of that toxicity moving forward. Now I do notice that you just congratulated him while we're recording this with a congrats, let's go to Kevin Afghani. Now I looked at Kevin's Twitter account and I have more Twitter followers than him. And I, you know, I, I voiced my, I, you know, I shot my shot with a, 
hey, oh, I'm walking in. Hey, oh, hey, Goomba, Paisano. And I, you know, I, I feel like I was overlooked with this. <laughs> I, I don't feel like I was given a fair shake by Nintendo. I mean, you are an Italian. I, too, have Italian blood. I you know I did my demo. They did not give me a fair shake either. There just must be something about our delivery that didn't capture the essence of Mario. But we grew up in a different time. We grew up with Captain Lou Albano as our Mario. And that's who we were trying to replicate with our performance. But clearly, they were still looking for that Charles Martinet. What's your favorite moment of Captain Lou Albano's life, Josie? You know what? From now on, when I'm going to talk to you, uh, I will, I I will say... That. Josie, comma, what is your favorite okay. moment of Captain Lou Albano's life? Great. Uh, I don't know who that is. Have you ever watched the Super Mario Brothers Super Show? Oh, yes, I have. So then you do know who Captain who, Lou Albano is. He, is. It, who he was, is, is, that, is that Mario? That is Mario. Oh, he did was you, a cool guy. Liked did, him, actually. Did you ever... Jose, did you ever swing your arms from side to side and do the Mario? I, I did not because I wasn't a, around really. I don't think when that was running. I watched it like reruns on Netflix and I wasn't as engaged as I would have been as a kid because I was like 15. When we do your feet uh, Patreon tier, we can include that as well. <laughs> what? It, as a part of it, it'll be Josie's feet and Josie no. doing the, the Mario, swinging wow. her arms from side wow. to side. It's very easy. I actually, funnily enough, I used to, um, on Nintendo Enthusiast YouTube channel, like a couple times, I had a couple of my female friends come over and do the Mario dance to the theme song as my outro for the show, because <laughs> um, we have to do the Mario. But, you know, the game sounds good. You know, Kevin is on his way. I wonder if we're ever going to find out what he got paid to voice Mario. So that way the internet can freak out about it like they did with other things. But yeah, um, Josie's not the only one that's played a new video game. I, hmm. I have been playing what could, what could pipe quite possibly be the superior 2D platformer come this holiday season. And I, of course, am talking about the Mario killer in the early 90s of Sonic with Sonic superstars. And I must say, this has been a very, very enjoyable experience. I don't think that there has... No, shut your fucking mouth. It is exactly what the game needs to be. It takes, it takes inspiration, I feel, from a lot of different Sonics. Especially, though in the level design of Sonic CD. Because when I think of 2D Sonic games, it's primarily left to right, you know? And I'm sure that's how Mario Wonder is. That's a staple of 2D platformers. But Sonic CD, you had, like, er there was times where you would have to go back. And, like, you know, you would go back and to the left. Back and to the left. And, like, that was sort of, <laughs> that was, you know, it was different. Even even now when you play Sonic um, CD, you know, it still feels a little bit different than a lot of the other Sonic games. And a lot of these levels are like that, where you're going back and to the left, or you're going up, or you're going down. And there's multiple pads. Like, I am um, I believe there's 12 worlds um in the game and I'm on world 11 right now. So I should be wrapping it up this evening, but there's tons of other stuff to do. There's hidden stuff. There's bonus levels there. There there's all sorts of craziness going on. I am playing it on steam right now. I have played both on my personal computer and on my steam deck. And I've just been having an absolute blast with this game. No pun intended. It is it is a excellent game for Sonic the Hedgehog fans. The levels are there's one there's one level that I just did that was really fucking cool. There's a I'm gonna call him Robotnik because I'm an old man. There's a Robotnik in the in the back. Oh, there's also like foreground and background elements. Like sometimes you jump back and forth between the foreground and the background. But in the in the distant background, there's like a sort of like a power plant Robotnik. And he has this little meter that charges up and you have to jump 
on these green um, blocks in order to shut down. It's like a power. It's a power stage, so it's kind of like a power meter. And what happens is if you just forget to jump on the green blocks, which are pretty plentiful, but there's a couple of times in the level that you might forget or you might just pass by one because you're just whizzing through. It'll it'll his meter will build up and then there'll be a countdown and then he just nukes the whole level. So like you're constantly <laughs> thinking about that and like it's it's super interesting. Like you know, it it's it's nothing extremely groundbreaking because at the end of the day it's a 2D platformer. And there's only so much you can do with a 2D platformer. That's why it's a it's a tried and true genre. But I think as a Sonic the Hedgehog game, this is a excellent experience if you're a fan of sonic the hedgehog you're definitely gonna love it and i think if you're a fan of just 2d platformers in general because it it doesn't necessarily just rely on speed and also you have like power-ups that like the chaos emeralds give you power-ups and you can activate the power-ups like once or twice per level when you get to like a a, a ring thing like you, you pass through the where the ring is on the level and it charges up your thing and you can use it it's very interesting. It's very unique. And I like it. You know, it does throw kind of a lot of different things on you, like the bonus levels. So with the bonus levels, it, there's a weird fucking thing. It's like it's a behind when you're doing chaos emeralds or trying to get the medallions, which is the in game currency, which I, st I still don't really understand, even though I'm almost at the end of the game. Like, what's the point of the in game currency? But I'm assuming I figure that out when I beat the game. Um, it's like a behind the back perspective and kind of like you're lat, you're, you're trying to attach onto things that are like in front of you. And it's, it's almost like a, it's almost like a, a Spider-Man web sling, if that makes any sense. Like you have to time the jump in order to jump onto the thing and then you sling across it and you're trying to like track down the thing. And then there's also medallion levels that you get medallions which are like i said the currency in the game and like those are like the twisty turnies of the sonic the hedgehog one bonus levels um so th there's a lot of shit going on with this game but i i've huh. genuinely just and i'm also a fan of sonic the hedgehog so you know my my video is not going to be unbiased plus i mean it's sponsored too for christ's sakes <laughs> but um you know, I mean, I like Sonic Forces to some degree. I thought it was mediocre, but I didn't hate it like everyone else did. But this is actually like a really good 2D Sonic game that feels like a progression of Sonic the Hedgehog games. And I've only been using Sonic. I haven't played as any of the other characters because you could choose them right off the jump. It's up to four people can play at once. I haven't tried any of those yet, you know, and I don't have any. One so. Do you feel this style of 2D Sonic, which in a lot of the reviews have made mention that the level design really wasn't up to prior 2D Sonic standards and there's a lot of automation in the stages, but do you think this style of 2D Sonic can exist in a post-Sonic Mania world or do you think the game wasn't quite as ambitious as you may have hoped in a post-Sonic Mania world? Well, the thing about Sonic Mania is Sonic Mania is just a retro 2D Sonic game. Like, there's there's no frills to it. it it's it's like, well, what if... It, it, to me, I look at Sonic Mania, and it's like, what if they did a 2D Sonic game on the Sega Saturn? And, like, that's what Sonic Mania would kind, uh -huh. of, would kind of be like. Whereas this feels more like a more modern game in terms of, like, the amount of content that's in it. Um, you know, the graphical style, like, yeah, it's, it's not mind blowing or anything like that, but it's a smooth, clean style. You know, it, they're not trying to do too much with it because one of the things about Sonic games is there was a period of time where they just went batshit fucking crazy and they just did. They were like, Oh, fucking Sonic and the black Knights. So now Sonic's a werewolf. Like <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? This is not what anyone asked for. <laughs> And there's people that love those games, but like, I, I, you know, even Sonic and the Secret Rings on the Wii, that was, a, I loved that game. I thought it was super fun, but it wasn't necessarily a great game. And there has been mediocre 2D Sonic games and, you know, Sonic Forces, that was kind of mediocre. Um, Sonic the Hedgehog 4, that was mediocre. Oh but, God, that was a game that was terrible. Right. But like this game, you know, 
He controls well. Everything looks good. Um, music, I would say that there's definitely some standout tracks. There's definitely tracks that stand out in my mind more so than others, but I don't think anything is necessarily bad. Um, and there's some pretty creative, you know, level design stuff. Like there's um there's a desert level where there's like a giant snake and like you're you're constantly jumping on the giant snake's back. There's some um the one of the levels I just did, you're like um it's kind of like a, a horizontal uh shmup, like you're on a moving platform and you're avoiding things in a side scrolling, you know, it's a auto scroll sort of thing. So yeah, there's a good variety in the game. And, you know, there's also bonus levels and stuff that are kind of like just ring base madness and stuff like that that you can unlock in the game. So there's there's, there's quite a bit of stuff going on with it. I've, I've been having fun with it. it. It's a no brainer for Sonic the Hedgehog fans. Uh -huh. But, you know, for more casual Sonic players, I, I think it's a good it's a really good game. You know, you said you haven't tried out the multiplayer yet. Who the fuck am I gonna play with my toes or something? Like who am I? Who am I playing? Uh, I was just, I was just wondering. I just, I think that is the the draw to that game for me. So I think that'd be fun. But other than that, I, I've never been a Sonic person, so I didn't even really like Frontiers. So. Well, that's gonna that's gonna be a problem for our debate segment of this show. Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> I'm panicking over here. Good, you should panic. But yeah, um. I am curious to see the Switch version, though. I know that the Switch version has leaked online, um, but... Yeah, I, I saw some of the leaked footage of an... I believe it was an Amy stage where she was transporting a AI companion. Oh, see, that that's a terrible... And that looked, that looked terrible. But that's a terrible stage to show off because, first off... That AI campaign that that's like a it's like a a a a quarter of the end of that level, so that's a terrible level to show off. Like three fourths of it, you're just playing as Amy and you're going around smashing all these fruits, and then you find the little AI dude, and then you you carry him to the end. But it's very slow. Like I don't I don't understand why anyone would show that off. Um, well, I mean that's the thing. It could have been a deliberate leak to show something out of context that is just abhorrent in terms of quality to get negative reactions and outrage online and i i'm sure okay so wait i see um uh let me mute this plaxicos gameplay switch so they obviously ripped yeah. the game off um okay so it's running at 60 um i will say I'm watching this at 1080p, 60 frames per second. You know, the gameplay still looks very smooth. Maybe the textures, yeah, maybe they're a, a bit softer, you know, than, I don't know. This this honestly looks very, very similar to the, the version of the game I'm playing with, like, not really any substantial downgrades. I'll put this in the chat, Nate, so you can... um see the game you can see the actual fucking gameplay not a, a a terrible thing to show off and then um let me know what you think about that dropped it in how the long is this game um i have been playing for about three hours or so and i'm nearing completion a couple mm -hmm. one of the boss battles kind of confused the hell out of me and I, I didn't understand what was going on but like i said there's additional stuff to do and it's it's not necessarily a game, especially if you're a completionist, you're not going to go through the level one time and get everything because there's multiple right. there's multiple paths in the level. Like there's upper areas you can go, lower areas you can go. There's bonus levels to find. You can actually get an ability with one of the chaos. I haven't gotten all the chaos emeralds. Um, you can um one of the abilities is that it lets you see the hidden stuff within a level like a hidden path and stuff like that so there, there's a lot of replay value in it especially i mean i i guess technically speaking you could just jump into the game run through it once and then be done with it forever but i don't think that's why you would buy the game obviously you're going to want to replay it you're going to want to get all the chaos emeralds you're going to want to get all the medallions you can get this that and the other you're going to want to unlock all the bonus levels and stuff so i i think there's a there's a decent amount of content for it could it have been a little bit less expensive? I mean, that's going to be a 2D. That's always going to be a debate with 2D games, I feel, um, because of the fact that 
you know, they're they're perceived as a lower budget game comparative to a 3D budget game because well, I mean, it's it's cheaper to make a 2D game than it is a 3D game. But this is a this is a good safe entry into Sonic the Hedgehog. They didn't try to go fucking nuts. They didn't try to make Sonic, you know, turn into an inchworm or something and yeah, you know, there's a, you know, turns into a praying mantis or something. No. They they stuck with what works, which is creative levels, nice visuals, good speed, and fun. And I think they nailed it on that front. I think the 75 on Metacritic, I'm not going to argue with that because it's a Sonic the Hedgehog game and there are people that do not like that style of game, but for me personally, it, it's it's a bit of a higher score. Yeah, I wonder if it's going to be one of those Sonic games that maybe the initial impression will differ in a few months, be it positive or negative, where you could have people say, oh, my initial impression was a little more negative on the game. But now in retrospect, when I revisit it, maybe it was really original and there was a lot of creativity on display. Or it could go the opposite way where people are playing it now saying, oh, that was really cool. But when they look back at it and reflect, say, and that wasn't up to the standard I typically hold for a 2D Sonic game. So I think the reaction to the game will be interesting, but we do have those initial middling reviews. So we'll see where the community lands on it when it releases in just a few more days. I will yell at people. Hey, talk <laughs> bad about this game in retrospect. I, 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 you know, I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a Sonic the Hedgehog game. You know, when, when I boot up a Sonic the Hedgehog game, I want to see hedgehogs there's there's no overbearing story with tons of voice acting there's none of that shit which i do not want anyways i don't care i do not care i understand what i'm doing saving some fucking animals who turned into robots as a robotnik do i don't you think that this is a style that they're going to continue with like having this kind of throwback 2d games uh E meh. I don't know. It depends how it sells. Yeah. It, it completely depends how it sells. Um, since I am a sales analyst, let me go ahead and look at the Amazon <laughs> movers and shakers department and see if with the reviews, this game has gone up or down where it is trending. Um, let's see up. Oh, so Sonic superstars on the switch is now at 57. It was 117. And that is the, let's see, Lords of the Fallen, Red Dead Redemption, out of, uh, well, I, I guess I can, I can, I don't have to look at movers, shakers, I can. All right, so go to bestsellers here. Let's see if they crack the uh, top 100. Well, yeah, it would have cracked the top 100, because it's 51, I think I said. But yeah, I, I think it's it's number fifty seven on the top one hundred, um, and the Switch version is the only version represented. But I mean, you know, Switch physical games always sell better, um, than usually other platforms. But I, I think it's a good game, and if you're on the fence about it, just wait like two months, and it'll probably be like forty bucks or something. Like it's a Sonic game; you're not new to this. You should be well educated by now. <laughs> um, but the other thing I want to talk about before we get into the debate is the whole Mortal Kombat 1 situation. And it seems like I am unfortunately dominating this episode because I also have played Mortal Kombat 1 on the Switch. <laughs> and um, I guess the big story was the patch that came out, but not necessarily what the patch did, which unfortunately the patch did fix wonky eyed Johnny cage. And I was very upset when I saw that because I, I liked wonky eyed Johnny cage. I thought it was funny <laughs> and I paid a hundred fucking dollars for the game. Like I should have been the most critical of it, but I was like, yeah, it's not the worst thing in the world, but I don't know. And it, it ain't no three out of 10. I don't know what the fuck. IGN was just riding a wave there with all their videos. You know, sad they haven't made an update or a video on the update patch or anything, but, it was the size of the update patch because this to me was not a simple update patch because this to me, oh, I could, I could tell you that it's not a simple update patch a hundred percent because when I went to download it, 
the upload the the update patch is 26 gigs i think it was 26.1 gigs i want to say i don't remember the original file size of the game but i want to say it was in the 30 range maybe but what happened was it was like you need to free up some space but it gave me the option to free up space from mortal Kombat one almost as to overwrite stuff within mortal Kombat one with this patch and that's what i did and i didn't have to delete anything so that to me is saying that they, they they're adjusting you know the the original game file here and as far as fixes are concerned like it's a bit better but like the load times aren't uh, really that much better i timed it in my video i made everyone watch a loading screen with me and it took 29 seconds and it's like huh Okay, but I, I I don't know. What do we think about this whole patch it later mentality, but more so the size of these patches on the system that we have right now? Well, I think on the Switch, it's insane that they're pumping out these just ginormous file sizes because the internal, like the actual system itself, if you don't have an SD card in it, it's going to take up all of your memory, right? Oh, um, yeah. And I just... I think it's unfortunate how every like most of these third par- or party companies they focus a lot on um you know getting the game out there when they set the deadline and I think something that Nintendo has done well is making sure that their games are ready to go aside from Pokemon obviously but it, it it's just kind of an unfortunate future I think of all all games having some sort of online component or being connected to the internet or something it's just that they know that they can just patch it later. So if there are these like bugs or are there are they these major issues like there are in Mortal Kombat, they just don't really care to a certain extent. They throw it out there because they know it's going to sell because it's a big enough name. And then I think it's but I, I I think it's very damaging and it can like cyberpunk, right? I mean that's sort of starting to come back around, but a lot of people were turned off completely from that game and aren't really ever going to dive back into it. Nathaniel? In the case of Mortal Kombat 1, I go back to the original thought of the game should have been delayed on the Switch. Because if you're going to release a patch this substantial roughly a month after it releases, it means you as the publisher and developer knew what you were launching was not up to par. And obviously this was a patch that was actively in development when the game had launched. Delay the game a month release it in the current state the game is in now, and you'd get more positive reviews, you'd have more positive word of mouth, and that can lead to stronger sales as we go into that holiday season. But the idea of being able to release a patch of such massive significance, this close to a release window, I'm not a fan of. I understand, you know, you can look at Cyberpunk, you can look at Redfall. Games that got significant patches months, if not years down the line, I can see where there is a case for those. That's a game you know you came out with and said, okay, we have a lot of work to do. We can make this better. But what we brought at launch, we felt as though was sufficient. Mortal Kombat 1 at launch wasn't a sufficient release. It needed a lot of work. Not for, yeah, not for the price. I, well, yeah, right. Like even in my video, I'm like, the core game is good. But I spent $100. And, it, you know, it's not worth $100. It's not worth $70, you know. And if you have it, if you have another system, buy it. it. It's almost one of those situations where it's like, what's the point of putting this on the Switch except greed? Because you're not gonna exactly. get the you're not gonna get the best experience. And I know people will be saying, oh well, I mean, at least they tried. Then it's like, well, some things you shouldn't try. You know, I I, <laughs> I I can try to jump off of a thirty story building, and I'm sure there's someone in the world that can do it, but. That doesn't mean that I should do it. You know what I mean? You know, I I am the switch right. in this situation. Yeah, there's certain situations where it's great that you have the ambition to try to do that one to one parody port, but if it's not up to a certain standard that you set for yourself, and when you're charging a premium price of seventy dollars, you have to evaluate what you're doing. And I think a case of Mortal Kombat One, had they looked at it and say we can give you the exact same fighters, the same stages, generally the same content. 
but we're going to go in a different graphical style, which isn't something that's foreign to gaming. We saw this during the Wii generation when it was getting downports of Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 games. They went with a different visual style, some resort to something more cartoony, and that gave that version its own unique flair. So had they wanted to do Mortal Kombat 1, and let's say they went for a visual style that was closer to the original Mortal Kombat games, it would have been unique say, hey, it's still Mortal Kombat 1, it has the same fighting system, but we're getting a unique take on it. You could justify things. When you're doing this one-to-one port and it's severely downscaled and if not outright atrocious, and then it's only going to be patched a month later, delay the game, do right by your consumer, because even if this patch now has fixed the majority of the issues, how many people are going to invest $70 into the Switch version now? Because odds are high that they've already purchased it on another platform. You're not going to get a second wave of interest for the Switch version. It's just for those who already bought the Switch version and you're placating them because you have to do right by the consumer to some degree. So in this case, I think a delay would have benefited them very substantially because had you bought it on the Xbox or PlayStation 5 a month ago and now a quality Switch version comes out, you might be looking at it saying, hmm, I'm really enjoying this on that console But the idea of being able to play it in a portable setting is really appealing to me. I know other people who are going to play it, so I'll double dip. Now you remove that option from people, and I think you kind of damaged, I don't want to say you damaged the brand, but you definitely have negated some of those potential double dippers. Because now you just run that risk of, we play the game, we've had our fill, we're moving on to the next thing. That would have been dope as fuck if they did a different visual style, like you said. Like, I love, that's the reason, because I actually never beat, like, Ghostbusters on the 360. I played the Wii version because, A, I love the motion controls, and, two, the art style was more so, like, the animated series, which is what I had very fond memories of as a kid. Mm -hmm. So, that's why, I that's actually a Wii game that I kept in my collection because I was like, I love this game because it's a distinct, unique version. And I mean, it was also on the PlayStation too, but like, yeah, I, I, I think a, a, a retro style or even like, I don't know if you could do it, but like, look at, look at like some of the, 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 um, I'm not, you know, I'm not even going to pitch that. I was going to say like, look at like, uh, Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe. Like, that's still a really good-looking game. But let's be real. The problem is they're not going to put that extra effort into it. It's like they're just going to release something for it and hope for the best and hope that it sells and hope that it runs okay. Because, you know, there's no prioritizing of the Switch version. And realistically, they they probably shouldn't prioritize the Switch version because the Switch version isn't going to sell better than the PlayStation or the Xbox. Well, maybe the Xbox version. Because Xbox people uh, kind of sometimes don't buy games. But jokes aside, you know, the 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 stronger hardware versions are going to sell better because that's where people associate those oh. games. And if you don't like it, kiss my ass, blame Howard Lincoln, because he's the one that fucked up Mortal Kombat <laughs> on the Super <laughs> Nintendo with Mortal Kombat 1. Did you know that there was a... They were thinking of doing, like, a, a Street Fighter-style update for Mortal Kombat 1 on the Super Nintendo called Mortal Kombat Nitro, and it was going to be like a stopgap. It was being done by Sculpted Software. They were going to do like a stopgap between 1 and 2. It was going to come out on the Super Nintendo and had like all these new features and stuff. I just learned about this last night watching um, a video from Top Hat Gaming, man. So I was like, what the fuck is Mortal Kombat Nitro? And yeah, um, Boone and Tobias... Or like piss off. We're working on Mortal Kombat too because this wasn't done by what was at the time Midway. This was done by Sculpted, who did the port of Mortal Kombat One for the Super Nintendo, and they were trying to trying to appease people because that version of the game. I mean, that was when the Genesis became the cooler system, and that's when Nintendo became the family friendly image. And it's literally because of that game, and people downplay that all the time yeah it's all due to the sweat instead of yep. blood and the fatality and, neutering yep i mean and that's the thing and to like your prior point with the change of artistic style and not prioritizing like a switch version by doing a change of visual aesthetic it would incentivize them and the consumer base to want to invest in that switch version because you say oh it's different 
it looks cool. It's going to have different flair and how the moves are going to look or the fatalities are going to look. That can provide that consumer base with reason to purchase a Switch version alongside a PlayStation 5 and Xbox version. Yeah, so it's could, a shame we don't see that more often. You could potentially get two sales out of that game because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I'm sure there were people. I mean, I double dipped with Ghostbusters. I just never finished it on the 360 back in the day. But then, of course, played the remastered edition. Great fucking game. but. You know, and then once again, the the original or the other art style version, that that's it. It's lost to the sands of time. You know, you play it on your PlayStation 2 or your your PS2 emulator or your Wii emulator or if you got original hardware. Mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't even get the multiplayer patch because no one bought the game. Yeah, did that's that. Mm. Josie, did you buy Ghostbusters remast the video game remastered on the I Nintendo Switch? I didn't. You but... you're the fucking reason why we didn't get the multiplayer <laughs> I... patch. Well, I mean, I didn't grow up with it. I mean, I watched like some of the movies, but it's not it's not a thing. I mean, it is a thing, but it's not a my thing. thing. But it, the it, game is the third movie. Yeah. Not but the, I don't not care enough about the movies one. to jump into it. What's you wrong watch, with that? You, you wa wait, wait. No, I haven't. I haven't watched it. I'm kidding. All right, don't, I don't, be know. don't be considering that as part of <laughs> Ghostbusters canon or else the Internet will get mad at you. Okay, my bad. I I've watched like the first ones, but I wasn't so into it that I was like, I need the third movie, so I have to play this game. I heard about it. I heard it was cool. I think I watched your video about it, RGT, like a year ago when it came out. I'll watch but it again. I oh. think it's cool for people who like it. It's just not my thing. Give it a little like ski on the video. <laughs> and our final topic. I'll comment. Uh, thank you. I I won't read it. Um. <laughs> Our final topic is going back to something we talked about earlier. It's kind of a bit on the whim. Look, don't blame us. Blame Nintendo for sitting on their thumbs doing nothing. Okay? Not a lot going on in the world. You see these fucking Nintendo YouTuber channels. They are scratching at the barrel, clawing their way for news and information. <laughs> Even John, John's having trouble clickbaiting it with his shoulders slightly to the side, mouth slightly open <laughs> with a different shirt on. And he says it's a new picture, but we are here to debate because a lot of people seem to like last week's debate. We're here Which to debate. I think I won last week. <laughs> whoa, whoa, what? No. I saw a lot of comments saying Nate won with what? multiple thumbs up. It was probably what? you. Each thumbs up is the equivalent of many, 100 many... million votes. I think I had the, the highest one up there. They're like, I don't know. No, it's because I had people in there saying it's not a Mario game. Newsflash, people. Nintendo calls it a mainline Mario game. It may be called, called Yoshi's Island, but it's a mainline Mario, so it counts. It's a Mario game. Revisit the vote. We were supposed to put up a community poll, but we don't have access to the YouTube channel. You're also <laughs> you're also a girl though, Josie. So you know people are trying to hype you up so they can be no, like, but I, maybe no, she'll I let me a... see her calf muscle if I if I prove <laughs> what she says. I think I have I think I have a a disadvantage actually because half of them are like, oh, this woman doesn't know what she's saying. Yeah, that's so. what they say. So so honestly, <laughs> that's just maybe me I... on all the counts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure. Well, here we go. You can get your, you can get, because you're going to start things off because, you know. Um, what? Yep. You know the topic at hand. Yeah. The winner leads. You yeah, declared you victory, want... so you <laughs> okay. go first. What right. is the best, and this could be 2D or 3D, the right. best Sonic the Hedgehog game? I think the best Sonic game is Sonic the Hedgehog 3 on the Genesis. It. You know, it has that similar run and jump, really fast zooming through the levels. But then it brings in this crazy little thing where you go in 3D at some points, which did something different for the franchise. Plus, the only reason I care about this game, actually, is the soundtrack is fantastic. And I don't care at all about video game soundtracks. Usually, I usually listen to podcasts while I play video games, so I really don't care. But... The soundtrack here is fantastic, and it is made by the one and only Michael Jackson. So you have to respect it a little bit. Um, and I think it's a game that really just set the standard for what Sonic is. And Sega has been trying to get back to how good that game was, and they keep failing over and over 
and over again. So honestly, it's the pinnacle of the Sega Sonic games, and on top of which, it has an amazing soundtrack. That's a decent case. Um, I will say, well, I, I won't give a def- Do we give defense? How did we do it last week? Did rebuttal. Go- okay. So my rebuttal with that would be the fact that the formula was kind of wearing a bit thin at this point. Or th- it was it was mm. getting a bit thinner at this point because really Sonic 3 is not a complete game. Sonic 3 was supposed to be it's Sonic 3 and Sonic Knuckles were uh, were supposed to be just one game together and they split it up. Okay. So to me it's a it's a good choice but I'm not putting it as the top because it's kind of a bit of a, of a split experience. It wasn't the full vision of that game. It was supposed to be more with that. Fair. Nate, rebuttal? I think Sean covered all the points that needed to be addressed there with the rebuttal. Well, good, because now you're up next. You see, this is a very challenging subject matter to address, especially when you include 3D and 2D in a singular topic. Three? Come on, nobody cares about 3D. <laughs> <laughs> I think the best overall Sonic game, and maybe it is a little bit of recency bias, is Sonic Mania. Wow. Wow. Hello. All right, state your case. The gameplay, the speed, the level design, the music, everything, it just encapsulated what we love about Sonic games. It did right by the character. It did right by the IP, something that Sonic Team had been failing to do just repeatedly over the years. After the dreadful release that was Sonic the Hedgehog 4, 2D Sonics were lost. We didn't know what the future was going to bring. And and Sega, they made a lot of valiant efforts. We got Sonic Generations, which was a good game in its own right. Sonic Mania really brought back that retro 2D Sonic feel, and that is what gamers wanted from Sonic titles. And that's why I have to give that the nod as the best Sonic game. Buttle. You, do you, are you going or me? Oh, you go ahead. It's not made by Sega. That may be. It, it's a... It's a fan game. And I get what you're saying. It's a fucking phenomenal game. But it's not from the minds necessarily of Sega. It's from the mind of Christian Whitehead, who is a Sega. I feel like a, 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 that's like that's like saying I made a fucking Mario game and it happens to be the best Mario game ever. It's because I'm not Nintendo and I or a Pokemon game or something. And like I, I hire a team of people who've made a game in the modern century and they understand game programming and it ends up being a a fantastic looking running and playing experience. You know, it's building upon the history and it does it very well, extremely well. It's a great game. I love it. And I would have picked uh, Sonic Mania Plus because that had more content in it. Um, (laughs) But it's hard for me to say it's the best Sonic game because of the fact that it's essentially like a really, really awesome fan game. Because you could say... That'd be like saying, um, what's the what's the Metroid fan game? That oh, uh, Metroid. Yeah. Um, AMR 2 or some shit like yeah. that. Yeah. Ass to mouth or something. Um, that'd be like saying that's Jesus the best Christ. Metroid game. You know, are we going to start considering fan games within this? I understand that Sega ended up, you know, getting involved and helping publish it. But that's a hard pill for me to swallow when it was not was not a, originally a Sega game. I mean, that is fair. It is a, it was made by a fanboy, for lack of a better term. It was a Sonic fan who saw the trials and tribulations that Sonic had been suffering for years, and they said, I can make a good Sonic game. And Sega gave them the opportunity, and they delivered. They gave Sonic fans what Sonic fans wanted by being a Sonic fan. I would agree that's probably the best modern-day Sonic game, but... 
like really the main thing, the main thing that's new about this game is that it isn't new, right? That it's such a throwback to the old style. So what does it really do to push the series forward? That's what, you know, I feel like it doesn't really have something that does that. I think that's a very fair comment as well. It, it relies on the nostalgia built by games of yesteryear. Built by Sonic 3, you might say. Would you? Or. Uh, I would. Or. Because now it's my <laughs> turn. <laughs> now, there's a difference between something being your favorite, something being the best. If we were talking about my favorite Sonic the Hedgehog game, we would be talking about Sonic the Hedgehog 2, of course. The game that it introduced so many things. Just an amazing amazing game from top to bottom however we're not here to talk about my favorite Sonic the Hedgehog game we're here to talk about the best and I am sorry folks I hinted at this I alluded to this in my talking of Sonic Superstars but the best Sonic the Hedgehog game ever is Sonic CD for Christ's sakes okay <laughs> reasons being Sonic CD is a product of the Sonic the Hedgehog 1 team. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was not... Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was supposed to be Sonic CD. But J Sega of Japan and Sega of America pretty much hated each other. They didn't get along. And Sega of America was like, no, this isn't what we want Sonic 2 to be. And Yuji Naka and Sonic Team was like, this is, this is what we want Sonic the Hedgehog 2 to be. So they ended up making this game and putting it on the Sega CD. Sonic the Hedgehog or Sonic CD introduces CD quality music. And I know that there, there's a weird contingency of people that are like, oh, the Japanese soundtrack is better. Bullshit. Bullshit. The North American soundtrack is light years better. It was a game where you could take that disc out or or you could keep it in your Sega CD and listen to the soundtrack because it was very well done. You had this past and future mechanic. I still don't even understand the fucking thing, but it changes the levels. And that's cool. It wasn't about just going left to right. There was also back into the left, back into the left mechanics as well. The bonus stages used super scaling technology that gave it a 3D look. Was it a bit dumbed down? Could they have done a bit more with the power of the Sega CD? Yes. Look at something like Batman Returns or Batman and Robin, the animated series, which actually contained a whole episode exclusive of the Batman, the animated series on that disc, which is still the only way. Well, I mean, there's other ways to watch it, but that was the only way to watch it back in the day on there. I think this is this is what... This is what Sonic the Hedgehog, the original creation team, saw Sonic the Hedgehog 2 as. And I think because of that, you have to respect it. And it also introduced Metal Sonic, who became a fan favorite in Sonic the Hedgehog 2. And the reason I say it's the best Sonic the Hedgehog game is because I did not play this game. All I played it as a little kid over at a cousin's house who had a Sega CD. However, I did not play Sonic CD until I was an adult. And as an adult... I was I still managed to appreciate it more than I appreciated things like Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Hmm. And neither of these fuckers play Sonic games really, so they have no <laughs> rebuttals for me. So what I can't say about Sonic CD is that some of the stage design is just a jumbled mess. It's it's supposed to be. It's dystopian. It's confusing. The controls are not sufficient. What about the box art, though? You the box to... art is fantastic. Fucking, I'm looking. I have it right. This is the only Sega CD game I kept out of selling my collection. And I'm looking at this. You got Sonic grabbing a Chaos Emerald. There's a fucking thing blowing up in the background, a huge explosion, and he got Metal Sonic trying to grab it from him. And I mean, Metal Sonic was so iconic in Sonic the Hedgehog 2, because I remember seeing him and being like, wow. And plus, plus, we had the animated short for you Sonic did. the Hedgehog CD. I'm sorry, folks. You know. I, I will give CD that its soundtrack is quite stellar. I'll give Sonic CD that much. But is it better than something by Michael Jackson himself? But the thing of it is, is that 
while Michael Jackson had involvement in Sonic 3 soundtrack, they also mimicked a lot of the music based on music from that time in other Sonic games, you know, before that. Like, yes, Michael Jackson was a Sonic the Hedgehog fan, so they mimicked Michael Jackson style music, um, Bobby Brown style music and stuff like that. Like that, that's the reason why those soundtracks are so good and so timeless because they took inspiration from those musical artists. And even, even at, at the very end of the day, if you want to give Sonic three, a better soundtrack, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't argue with you on it. I would say, you know, it comes down to personal preference, but what doesn't come down to personal preference is the opening animated cutscene of Sonic CD only capable to be done with the power of the Sega CD. There's no there's no power of the PlayStation 5 here, and then you release the games <laughs> on PlayStation 4. No, sir. No, madam. You cannot do certain <laughs> things that Sonic CD does on the Sega Genesis. A very compelling argument. Yeah. And you can play two of the three games on the Sonic Origins Plus collection, and the other one, Sonic Mania, is dirt cheap. So that's another beautiful thing about Sonic the Hedgehog. All of his games are cheap, and they're available on modern platforms. It's true. And with Except that, oh, for Sonic Heroes. Well, and Sonic Adventure. And Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. Oh my god, I played Sonic Heroes for the first time the other day. That was such a weird experience. Oh, there, have you, gone, you need to go down the Sonic rabbit hole. Sonic Unleashed. Sonic. Oh, yeah. No, I had that on the Wii. My oh. brother liked that game. I hated what's, it. What's the Bioware game? Sonic and the Dark Chronicles? Yeah, that was on the DS. That, that's yeah. not a bad game, honestly. No, I, it's a nice little RPG. It's yeah. Just weird it's, that Sonic. Yeah, it's it's very... They tried to... I don't know. So Sonic should be an easy thing to do. Like, Mario, that's an easy motherfucker to do. Like, you, you know what you're doing. You, you stick to it. Sega, for whatever reason, I don't know. They couldn't, they couldn't replicate it. But they also made mm. way too many Sonic games, and then there was too long of a drought. You know, you had Sonic 3D Blast, and then you had Sonic Adventure, and like in between, you had like Sonic Jam, which was just one through three again on the Sega CD. Sega was just a fuck up at this time love you <laughs> sega love you. the only thing i remember about sonic heroes is the main theme song that's a it it's so weird because you're like switching between them and i was i don't know the whole thing is so bizarre i'm not like a big sonic fan because i grew up with my brother playing unleashed which i thought was super stupid so i don't know if i'll be able to get over that but if I ever dive down the rabbit hole, I'll let you guys know. There's 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 a lot to uncover with it. Yeah, sure. See, if we were just doing the 3D Sonics, I think Sonic Adventure would have come up. There's nothing more iconic than the Orca destroying the bridge. Yeah, but have you played that game like within the past 10 years? I tried it on, what was it, the <laughs> Xbox 360 when they did that port and they ruined the controls. And The controls were never good. They were no. never. They were ruined. never. It was never good. They were never really good. <laughs> and like I, I know exactly what you're saying. I love uh Sonic Adventure and the Orca and stuff. Just amazing looking graphics. Still looks great today, by the way. The Dreamcast has to be one of the most timeless systems because so many of those games still look fucking amazing because they use something called color in their games, which you know, <laughs> after that everything was just like, oh dude, let's use like browns and grays and greens and stuff for the colors. <laughs> what the fuck? What what happened here? But um no, I mean those games are, are really good, but they have pretty wonky controls. It's kind of like, you know, Sonic R, which, you know, wasn't a great yeah. game. But but the version that was on the Sonic Gems collection on the GameCube, they fixed the controls. They made it so you could actually control it, and it's a pretty fun game. And that, yeah, oh, wait, 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 wait. Josie tried to say that Sonic 3 has the best Sonic soundtrack. No, you have never played Sonic R. Can you feel the sunshine? Does it brighten up your day? That Sonic R is leagues better than that. And Sonic Frontier also has a phenomenal soundtrack. Sonic Frontier okay, does but like. A phenomenal who ma not Michael Jackson it's irreplaceable you can mimic a hero but it's never going to be as good there's tons of Elvis impersonators who will marry you but they're not as good as the main guy 
Are you marrying an Elvis impersonator? Is this an no, exclusive? No, but if you go, I'm just saying, if you go to Vegas, you can get married by Elvis. But it's oh, not. Oh, you made it seem like you could actually marry Elvis. Have you, mercy. What? That's from Full House. Well, since my baby left me. Yes, and what was Jesse? He was an Elvis impersonator. Yes, Originally, sure. he was. He was great. However, not everyone's going to look like Jesse. Just how not every Sonic soundtrack is going to be as great as the one made by Michael Jackson. Or even, I guess, the crappy follow-ups. Fall in the trap. I can't hold I honestly don't I even know. So <laughs> I don't know Sonic enough to win this debate, so. No, it's fine. Because it doesn't matter what the fuck we say. It's what the comments say. And they'll be like, Ooh, girl, she might show me your big toe. Josie wins. Sonic no, 3 is the There's best. no way that is what it is. Exactly what it is. No. Um, but with that. We will wrap things up. Somehow we made this an hour long show, which is fucking amazing <laughs> because we pretty much wing this. Um, I am RGT85, joined always by Josie Woe. Josie, hopefully her internet gets fixed in the next month. It just or two. got fixed. It Did it sound better through yeah, the. Th it did. Yeah. Like halfway through, the Wi Fi came back. So I switched over. Okay. And I think it should be good to go for now. They ran a new cable through the house. You're just fucking everything up there at this house. You're like, I need some better internet in this goddamn house. No, I didn't even ask for it. It was it was the the lady I I work for. She asked for it, so I was just um uh wanting to do it too. So yeah, and of out. course, Nate the hate. Vote for Sonic Mania <laughs> because it's the right choice. And I'm RGT. We'll catch you guys on the next episode. I guess we don't have any questions this week even though we did question did we do questions last time no no john didn't give us any fucking questions Hold another on. time then yeah uh, yeah because you gotta go okay well yeah. if we got to do a double batch of questions we'll do a double batch sorry guys um john's a fucking piece of shit like i've been trying to tell everyone but nobody <laughs> listens to me all right goodbye